A beach? That isn't too gross, hopefully. You probably didn't know Mississippi had a beach like this, but they do. When I began this road trip in New Orleans, it was early spring, but it's already starting to feel like summer now. We're in Biloxi, Mississippi. There's a lot about Biloxi that's different than the rest of Mississippi. For one, it's way more laid back here. There's some money down here and really nice suburbs, and it's not as religious as the rest of the state. And you definitely won't see as many Confederate flags flying down here. Uh-uh. Biloxi isn't amazing or anything, but it's unique. I think the Mississippi coast might as well be another state. Come on! Ah, I never win. Sucks. But a lot of people win big here, clearly, because there's casinos all over town. Biloxi is kind of casino central for the Gulf Coast outside of New Orleans. There used to be riverboat casinos up and down this place back in the day, and it was known as a place for loose slots and loose women. Well, it's not that cool here anymore. It's much less buzzy, but it's still got some energy. Biloxi's not a very big city. There's about 45,000 people in town. If it wasn't for the casinos, you could say it's kind of quiet here. You almost feel like you're on an island. The whole city is along this narrow peninsula that sticks out into the Gulf. It's a mile wide and 10 miles long. There aren't very many cities laid out like this. You could call it a beach town, although I don't know if I've ever really heard it called that before. You don't see a lot of sunburned people walking around in their suits. The place doesn't have tacky beach shops. There aren't miles and miles of umbrellas lining the shore. The whole coastline from Biloxi all the way down to Louisiana border is about 44 miles long. The sand's a really pretty shade of white, but the water itself is not really all that. It's brown and sort of gross. But we're going to come back to the coast later, because there's a whole lot of other stuff to talk about first. Biloxi was settled by the French, and by the 1800s, it became a big deal in the cotton era. There was a lot of money made here. Then a bunch of rich southerners turned the area into a summer resort for themselves, and the whole place kind of took off. You could say Biloxi was founded by wealthy slave owners. Later on, it became known as the seafood capital of the world. There were canneries all over this part of town in the late 1800s. Shrimp boats and oyster luggers were parked up and down this coast. They even had a deep sea fishing rodeo here. It probably smelled really bad, but they were making a lot of money pulling stuff out of the water back then. This was a very popular vacation destination in the 1950s. But when they brought the casinos in, that's what really drew the crowds in. Pretty soon, they called this place the Poor Man's Riviera. Today there's eight casinos in Biloxi, and they're the biggest buildings in town. <laughs> they're kind of the only buildings in town. Like when you cross over the bridge, you see these big buildings and you're like, oh, okay, Biloxi has kind of a skyline. Those are just 20 story casinos. It kind of reminds me of Atlantic City, but not nearly as run down. Most of the people in the casinos are tourists. They aren't very well packed. Well, on Tuesdays, they aren't very packed. Maybe it gets more exciting on the weekends. I don't know. Did you know Mississippi ranks fifth in the country for gambling revenue? They made a billion dollars last year. Well, good. More money for the poor people then. 
But the state's still poor. The casinos are keeping all the money. I don't know about that, Mappy. I don't know who's getting the money and who isn't. But I would agree that there's a lot of people in this state that could sure use some more dough. I'll tell you what, it's super cheap for being so close to the beach, at least in Biloxi proper. So here's the deal with the neighborhoods here. Most of Biloxi is just average. There really isn't a bad side of town. There really isn't a good side of town. I drove all around one afternoon and I was like, it's just generally average looking. Like this street. It's kind of clean and tidy, not fancy, but comfortable. It might look tame, but based on statistics, it's the second most dangerous place in Mississippi. But I've been to bad and dangerous, and this was really nothing. I think a lot of the crime has to be related to the casinos. Casinos do not do a lot of good things for these cities, except generate money. And then they have to use all that money to fight off all the new crime. But 150 grand gets you a house a block from the beach here. You don't see that very often, do you? There's pockets all over Biloxi that still have hurricane damage or look kind of worn out. The place still hadn't recovered from Katrina. And then not too long ago, a new storm called Ida wrecked the place good. People said the coastline looked like an atomic bomb had gone off. My God. Something like 20% of the city was destroyed. A lot of the casinos and touristy stuff were wiped out. So there went the city's income stream. A lot of people fled for Texas and never came back. It'll never be the same here. And there are more storms coming in the future. So they're doing their best to rebuild here but it's expensive to build a home here now. There's all kinds of red tape and high insurance premiums to deal with. Maybe something's trying to tell them, do not build here again. It's probably gonna be underwater one day, at least according to certain scientists. But the way the place looks, it's the style of the homes and the vacant lots. To me, it looks very third world Caribbean. This all reminds me of neighborhoods I've seen on vacation. The construction projects that look like they'll never be done. Random stoplights that don't work. Long stretches of road where there's just nobody around. And the sun and the sky and everything just gives it that island vibe. There really isn't much of a downtown Biloxi. There's a kind of downtown with some things to do, but nothing like you would see in a city you've actually heard of. Just some places to eat and a little bit of retail and office space. There's really nothing to speak of. But again, no bums, no smash and grabs, no graffiti, needles on the ground and tents everywhere. I'd rather be here than any city on the West Coast. You guys can keep your overpriced bars and entitled fentanyl addicts. But clearly, Biloxi is the vibrant and cultural hub on this part of the coast. It really is the only game in town between New Orleans and Mobile. Now, I think the best part of the Mississippi coast is not Biloxi. It's the surrounding areas that really make this coast so wonderful. Across the bay is Ocean Springs. It's an upscale little burb right along the eastern coast. There's maybe 17,000 people here. The average household brings in about 85K a year. And to be honest, I don't know where they work. I mean, there aren't a lot of big companies in the area. They have festivals here all the time, and it's very artsy. The downtown area is very popular, and I think it's pretty neat. It all feels kind of snobby. But it's not a bad place to live at all. 
It's nice and quiet and safe. That's why homes are twice as much here as they are over the bridge in Biloxi. There's a lot of retired and older folks in Ocean Springs, but younger people are moving here too because the schools are so good. And look at these houses along the water. These are million dollar homes, clearly. Really nice, huh everyone? Before you start Googling for listings, know that you have to fork up about twelve to $14,000 a year in insurance. Some of these people pay almost fifty k a year for insurance. But you know why that is. We'll be right back. So this is probably a good time to talk about one of my sponsors. Look, I stay up on the news and I keep hearing about this financial crisis that's going to happen. Like Bloomberg and BlackRock and even Wells Fargo are saying we need to change our financial plans. Some are saying the US dollar won't be the world's currency. Other news is saying we're due for a recession. But almost everything you read says something's brewing. One way to have a good backup plan is to invest in gold and silver. A lot of experts say the cost of gold is going to go through the roof soon. Patriot Gold Group is a top rated gold and silver coin dealer that helps customers invest in physical precious metals. If you think we're going to see a financial crisis, a good alternative is a no fee for life 401k or an IRA that's backed by physical gold and silver. A lot of top experts say gold and silver is going to hit record highs. I'm telling you, I'm doing it. The link to Patriot Gold's in the description. And let them know Nick Johnson sent you. And now back to the show. There's other nice middle class areas on the other side over here. I mean, pretty much everything west of Biloxi all the way to the Louisiana state line is just super nice. Just small little upscale communities with between 6,000 and 15,000 people. They're all really safe. They have good schools. They're right along the water. Just wonderful places to be. I was like, I had no idea the Mississippi coast was like this. It's as cool and eclectic as anywhere in California without the homeless people. Kind of Jimmy Buffett meets Hemingway. I'm telling you, the Mississippi coast has a lot going on, people. The first city you come to when you head west out of Biloxi is Gulfport. It has a completely different vibe than Biloxi. Look at these homes right on the coastal highway. I looked it up. You can get a house with a water view for about 800k right here. I know, right? And there's lots of open land too. All kinds of opportunities for somebody to come in and put a nice beachfront home and then watch it wash away one day. Just saying. I don't know what you do for work, but if this is your morning commute, it wouldn't be that bad, would it? Of course, it's Mississippi. It's never boring when it comes to politics. There's tension here between the two political parties. Down here on the coast, it's pretty progressive, and they also happen to have a lot of money. A majority of the state is black and rural and poor. And down here on the coast, it's white and suburbs and sort of wealthy. So the rest of Mississippi and the coast constantly bicker about how to spend the state's money. Jackson and Biloxi do not see eye to eye. Nuh-uh. Down here, they want good schools and gay rights. They do not want that in the rest of the state. Anyway, it's just more politicking. We see that in every state, I guess. And by the way, homes on this street are only $180,000 each. I know, right? Pass Christiane is another charming little spot along the coast. It's way more expensive here than it was over in Gulfport. Homes here are closer to $300,000. But still, what a deal to be blocks from the ocean. I mean, look at that. You can get a nice home with a boat launch down here for hundred and seventy grand. No shit. Check out the past Christiane Walmart. I've never seen this before. A beachfront Walmart? 
just too much. It's pretty much like this the entire length of the Mississippi coast, all the way down to Bay St. Louis. And Bay St. Louis might be the coolest little beach town of them all. I mean, look at this place. It's probably best for upper tier professionals or retirees because there just aren't a lot of jobs way down here. But these people have found a way to make it happen. And I don't think these people have to worry too much about crime or a-holes ruining everything. It must be nice. And then briefly, it's worth mentioning D'Iberville. That's also a nice city. It's on the north side of Biloxi. It's not as charming as the beachside communities, but it's very solidly middle class. And this place is blowing up. It's now the second fastest growing city in the state. There's only 10,000 people here now, but words out, you can get a house in D'Iberville for about 160 k And they say there's no more affordable left in America. Huh? Well, out and about in Biloxi, I did a lot. I was there for two whole days. As soon as I got to Biloxi, I just had to get to the coast because it was so nice outside and all. The day before I was in Mobile, Alabama, it was really cloudy, but not today. I had some drinks and lunch at one of the Shaggies, which is right along the water. They're a chain down here. Good food, great people. I highly recommend it. Look at this place all packed. You'd think you were in Florida or some beach vacay. Nope, this is Mississippi. From my patio chair, I looked out onto the water and I wondered if anyone actually swims out there. I had heard that they were pumping sewage into this bay in the 80s and the Gulf water here has a bad reputation. So I asked our server and she said she's lived here forever and she doesn't swim in it, but other people do. That wasn't very convincing to me. So I just hung out on the boardwalk and stayed clear of the water. It's just super nice and quiet. I didn't see any trash or loud people or yelling, or homeless people. This coast is way better than California's coast, I'll tell you that. It's not bustling here, but there's enough entertainment and nature around, I guess. And by the way, they have to dredge to keep the sand like that because of erosion. Later in the day, I took in a round of mini golf at Lava Link's Putt-Putt. They have a real working volcano and everything. Feels like Vegas. Of course, the golf course is part of a casino. Seems like everything in this place is somehow connected to a casino. Here's me on the eighth hole. I ended up losing the round after having a big lead. My driver made a miraculous comeback. Truly tragic, I have to say. Big choke job. But the highlight of the trip was going to opening night at the Biloxi Shuckers game. They're the double A team for the Milwaukee Brewers. It's a really nice stadium. I kind of thought there'd be more people here since it was opening night and all, but. Hey, we got opening day. What do you have to say about that? Shuck yeah! And they have this tradition where before every game, the fans gather at a brewery down the road and then they march down to the stadium. It's the most delightful little parade you've ever seen. Pitch your number one team, Nick. The umpires were fired up that it was opening night. How do you guys feel about opening night here in Biloxi? Pretty good. Another game, really, for the most part. Look at those prices. I guess it's just like that everywhere now. Used to be you go to a minor league game and get hot dogs and beers for three bucks a pop. Not anymore. Those are major league prices. 
Of course, a big sponsor for the Shuckers is the Beau Rivage Casino. Since the damn thing towers over the ballpark, I guess they were like, we should probably be a sponsor. The game went into extra innings, and the Shuckers won on a walk-off home run on opening night that I didn't get on camera, damn it. On my last morning, I sat there looking out over Biloxi Bay, and I thought, I like this part of Mississippi. And I didn't think I'd say that. I actually didn't know much about it at all before I came. The beach and the casinos provide the energy and the purpose for the place. The little towns along the coast are very peaceful. And the people. There's something about the people down here that's different. Humble isn't the right word. Grateful, maybe? Content? Maybe that's it. The whole place feels satisfied. The Mississippi coast is a hidden gem. This might be one of the most slept on areas in the south. Hopefully the place doesn't get ruined one day. That would suck. <laughs> Okay, so Ray Belandi, you're a Biloxi resident. You're a local historian. Thank you for joining me on the call. Um, I've been talking to you a little bit. My wife and I, we were down in Biloxi. Um, we had a really good time. Um, you know, I did not think I was going to like the Mississippi coast as much as I did. In fact, Ray, I didn't really know much about the Mississippi coast. I get down to Biloxi and I'm like, this place is pretty cool. The whole coastline. What's mm -hmm. going on down in Biloxi? Um it, I think it's kind of a hidden gem down there. It kind of se seems like a little sleepy place. What's going on in Biloxi? Well, if you grew up in Bil <laughs> Biloxi like I did, um, it was sleepy then in the 50s. I was born in 43. Um, it's booming. You know, it doesn't seem sleepy to me, but compared to Atlantic City, Vegas, yeah, I would. it's pretty sleepy for sure. Yeah, I you know, I like it. Um how how have the casinos impacted Biloxi? How long have they been there? How have they impacted Biloxi? Oh, sorry. Tremendously. Employment. Um Biloxi started out, say it was people started there weren't many people there at uh, in the early eighteen hundreds. Then um Nothing really happened, and it was discovered by people from New Orleans. Before the casinos came in the early 90s, Biloxi was pretty dead. Uh, it had depended upon the seafood industry and uh, Keesler Air Force Base at its main economic engines. Uh, seafood started declining in the 60s, and what, what really killed the seafood was the imports from foreign imports. When, when the casinos came, uh, there weren't enough hotels, restaurants, um, and it grew, it grew steady enough that uh, as the casinos were built, you know, they weren't all built at one time. They came originally as steamboats from Iowa and smaller boats. Uh, the law, the original law that was passed to allow gaming in Mississippi was pretty restrictive and the casino could not be on land it had to be in the water um the hurricanes we drove around and it looks like a lot of people are rebuilding from the hurricanes absolutely how, how that's that, that seven pardon me how is that going that, with the rebuilding it's going good it uh, see what real what katrina did it, it basically erased that the entire coast from bay st louis to alabama uh, inland about, in some places, miles. 
Yeah. Do you I'm think sorry. Biloxi will ever be the same again? Same as After compared all. to what? If to win. Yeah, before, the, before the hurricanes? Um, I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> so it's better now. <laughs> oh God! Yeah, of course. Uh, it's it's so bizarre because I've lived, you know, I haven't lived in Biloxi all my life because I left eighteen, went to work, and uh, I lived in California, Texas, overseas because of the oil business. But um, it never fails that after a hurricane, life is better. Yeah, it's uh, just a very. I mean, I, I guess I, my, I was surprised to see. Hmm. How nice Biloxi and the and the coast was. Why 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 don't people, most Americans know how nice the Mississippi coast is? Why why is it such a, a secret? Well, I know. Of course, living here, you, you see all these people, and you don't think it's a secret, right? Because you you know you're like, wow, where do they all come? Well, you know the casinos are wonderful marketers. You know they were flying. Maybe they still fly them in free. Uh, they used to have real cheap flights out of Orlando and maybe Tampa and Florida. And a lot of retirees, you know, they said, yeah, I can yeah. fly to Bel for $50, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not even talking about the casinos. I'm talking about all the neighborhoods, Ocean Springs, down to Pass Christian, down to Bay St. Louis, it, Gulfport. It's, it's all always very been like that. It's always yeah. been like that. It's just uh, nice. It's amazing how much is, of the older homes have survived. Yeah. Um, Biloxi is not the, you know, the Biloxi today is not the one I grew up in. It's, uh, if you'd go in, into town a little bit more now, surprisingly, the downtown is coming back. I mean, back in the seventies, there was a thing called urban renewal and it probably destroyed more historic buildings and properties than anything a fire or an earthquake or a flood could have done. So Biloxi is just recovering, uh, it's what, 50, 50, 60 years from urban renewal. They're starting to build uh, or restore some of the older buildings and put condos upstairs, businesses downstairs. In the last two or three years, Biloxi has had an enormous amount of uh, activity on the main street, which had been pretty much dead. Yeah. Downtown Biloxi is coming on strong. Ray, it was just good to show people a good part of Mississippi because a lot of people don't know um, that Mississippi well, has good areas. And I'm glad to see that there's places that are thriving. The problem with Mississippi, and um, I'm going to have to say it, if you live here, at least where we live and other places, I think the races get along very well. We always have. You get all the trash and fake news, and it scares people. You know, they said, oh, my God, we're not going to Mississippi. The people who come here, like yourself, and the, the gambling people. Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you on not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country. And I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.